Ricardo joins me now. So take a look at some of the things you've been talking about on social media, especially on that X. Absolutely. The weekend notwithstanding, Nigerians always come through. Well, there's a big elephant in the room, yep. uh, and that's about the planned protest, which we'll get into. Uh, the presidency has been speaking, state governments have been speaking, opposition and others, Nigerians, have been speaking as well. So that's something we're big on on the show this morning, particularly as the countdown uh, continues. Well, let's start off uh, with a statement made in River State. River State. And uh, that statement has been causing ripples, essentially. And it's a statement made uh, by the APC caretaker chairman, former chief of staff, Tony Okocha. So I'd like you to listen to what he said, and then we'll take a look at what you are saying about that. Of staff, I give hand that. I give. Elections could be written inside Chief of Staff's office. It was done so in my time. We did so. We'll write the results and hand over to the commission. They will just, their business is going to go and announce. And of course, after announcing the results, if you feel aggrieved, you will present before the tribunal. The tribunal is as set up by the state government. They also have their own handouts. Now, the appeal to whatever decision the tribunal takes is at the state high court. They will also have their handout. So what will they ask, what will you do is you will accept your fate. And it is the reason why in all states where they have conducted elections, Multiple indictments there, Jeffrey, as yeah. in at different levels. No, it's not just indictment, multiple admission. Right, but people indicted as <laughs> yeah. well. Personal indictment, <laughs> electoral <laughs> indictment, judiciary indictment, tribunal it, it, indictment. I'm just processing, I'm just processing it. Did this man, this gentleman, Tony Okocha, just uh, confess to electoral fraud on television? Is that what this is? Well, <laughs> let's hear what you are saying, Kaide. Yeah, the first one. Shafi Hamidou is the first on this. Uh, he says he needs to be arrested immediately. That's what this user thinks, point blank. He confessed to a crime on national TV. This is jailable offense. Vote manipulation and buying is a crime under the Constitution. <laughs> because people are wondering, is this, does this appear like this is what I'm hearing? Anyway, Ayo uh, Dijikari says, imagine this kind of testimony, yet no one is getting punished. We still, they play as a nation. Mm. Nero. A lot of people understandably jumped on this. Fine, these are things that we have talked about, brought up. In fact, arrests are made time and again. We have evidence and people ask what's happening to prosecution. So on the one hand, people are not exactly shocked. shocked yeah. But with this kind of admission at this level in such a transparent <laughs> and accountable manner, Nero <laughs> says he knows nothing will happen to him after mm. openly admitting to electoral fraud. This is why this user says, he always says, we cannot move forward as a nation with people like this in power. Uh, that's what this user has to say on that one. All right, Umuke Ogbonna says, it is also important that the truth be told. Okocha became chief of staff in the second tenure of Amechi's reign. Yes, on weekend was the director of campaigns when Amechi ran the second tenure election. Okocha should tell Nigerians which election result he wrote as chief of staff. So I think that's also quite important. In the spirit of transparency spirit and accountability. Of, you know, the part that you mentioned as well, he said, look, we give hand out to INEC. Wow. They just announced That's the electoral fraud. That's electoral fraud. And then in case you're heading to the tribunal, we also give hand out to the people in the judiciary in the state. So you have already, uh, you've already lost. So or no even point. the state high court as yeah, well. Yeah, so there's no point even doing the election. But you know, what he was saying on the side mm -hmm. is uh, having a rethink to uh, conducting elections at the local government level. Yes, so there's that's, a baby, that's the context. Yeah, there's a baby and the bathwater, but it looks like we're considering everything together at this point. I don't know if the baby is the admission <laughs> or the bathwater, yeah. but the point is he was trying to say, let's rethink how we approach elections. You know, there's a call. Yeah. There's a call for um, to, to amend, I think, Section 197 of the Constitution so that INEC conducts local government elections. Yeah. Because we've seen elections happen. Uh, Gombe, APC, or your PDP, Delta. Adamawa, PDP, Delta, PDP. Just yesterday, Ebony, APC. As usual. This next user, uh, I think it's uh, Nick Code 3, he says, I don't think this is an old video. No, it's not an old video. It's last week. We just gave you live on channels television. Uh, or rather, I don't care. That's what this user said. I don't care if this is an old video or not, but you can't come out openly to confess about 
uh, getting involved in electoral fraud on national TV and not be punished in accordance with the Nigerian constitution. Okay, Emi Zabet underscore says, in the Sena environment, this man would have been picked up by now and arraigned in court. In the Western world, even if he makes these kinds of, these kind of utterances after 30 years, he'll still go to jail. This can only happen in Nigeria. So that's it about that, at least for now. We'll wait to see how this plays out. So from that, let's move to the National Assembly, particularly the Red Chamber, which we call the Senate. Lots of videos to show you, but perhaps uh, let's just get into the reactions to this one. So we had the president of the Senate, Gautila Fabio, uh, you know, speaking uh, to, well, in the chamber, to one of the senators, uh, Senator uh, Natasha. And, you know, one of the things they said is we're not in a nightclub. So that will give it to you in a moment. As I said, lots of videos to play. Uh, but let's keep this one, at least for now, uh, and go over to the big one on Dangote Refinery. Because yes. it concerns petrol supply in the con country, the quality or otherwise uh, energy security. So yeah. Dangote has come out to, will I say respond now? Yes, To respond. NMDPRA's yeah. claims about the Kyle, quality. They don't want to know mm -hmm. the level of politics that is, playing that is playing out. There are so many things Nigerians don't know. Well, I actually I, want to know. Maybe I already know. <laughs> there, but... <laughs> there are so many things. No, trust me, there are things Nigerians don't know. But there's a lot playing out. And so I've never seen this guy, this desperate fighting for his life. $20 billion investment, and there's a threat. So there are layers to it. So, but we'll just take your reaction. But he was saying he wasn't giving a free meal. He paid for the land. So what incentive did he get from government? People saying he's uh, looking for another monopoly. He's not a good player in a, in a, in a free market. Uh, because the man, the NNDPR man was saying, we want us to direct all the suppliers to you. That's not good for our energy security and all of that. Even talked about the quality of the quality diesel. Or he countered and said, my diesel is even of the best quality. Right as he was speaking, he got results. He got results, yeah. Results. Because and when results. you talk about the what they call the PP and the parts per million, yeah. talking about the sulfur content, yeah. from the numbers we see, his own appears to be the best. Uh, about 80 something, nice, 32. Others are about in their thousands and all of that. And when you talk about the uh, flashpoint, that's to talk about lowest temperature. Yeah. The minimum is 60. Uh, others are less than that. His own is 98. So there is a lot to talk. So this is my advice. When you're looking at this Dangote story, dissociate your emotion and look at it logically. But let's hear what you're saying. Ajisola Enterprise says, what about money from federal government, one billion loan? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where that's coming from. Okay. That well, was good I, know, I know what you're talking about, but uh, you know that uh, the government didn't come through really on its own end uh, balancing that money. So that's why Dan Gautier came out and said, well, it's not the 20% you people thought, it's actually 7%. Okay, let's help them contextualize right. that. So there is a share agreement, uh, you know, when you the government approach, I want to get 20% yeah. from you to be part of this refinery. Uh, but there's all called pay of equity, which you have to pay within a certain period. Exactly. They paid initial money. But they didn't meet up. Uh, they the didn't rest. meet up those pay up, uh, those, uh, uh, they didn't pay up those uh, equity. And then that's why it came out to say, when the gas bill started, sorry, oh, your 20% is not 20%, it's 70. In fact, I want you owing me, forget, sir. Let's <laughs> and there's also the crude supply part. Well, yeah. Zama Omar uh, yeah. says, why the sabotage? Mm. Why are all this, or why is all this witch hunt mm. happening now? I think you meant to say, who are these cabals in the oil sector? Are they unknown people? Lots of questions from this user. Let us know the enemies of the nation, because whoever is sabotaging the Dangote refinery is sabotaging the state. Oluwa Femi says, I hope FG looks to last for lasting solution to the economic crisis in Nigeria ASA because both the rich and the poor are suffering from the policies that the government is setting uh, for both small scale and large scale businesses. Mm. Yeah, particularly because they said that, well, I bought the land, particularly in Lagos, for uh, what, a hundred million dollars. million dollars. So this user says, I might be overreacting, but I don't see how paying for land and not collecting any incentive. Uh, from both federal and state governments addresses the issue of monopoly. Probably they were speaking on the issue of sabotage or something else, but definitely not monopoly. All right, Kerry Black says, is he not supposed to pay for the land or is he selling cement or any other product for Lagos State on different prices? Well, Kyrie. the thing about issues like this, when they blow up, everybody uh, gets a piece of uh, the action, mm. throws in their two cents. So that's exa exactly what we're doing right now. But the big picture, we shouldn't lose sight of it, is the fact that we need petrol prices to come down, so at least it can reduce the economic hardship. We're actually counting down uh, uh, to the August date that Melekiari, from his words, from his mouth to our listening ear, 
he told Nigerians that by August, Potako refinery should start working. Dangote also says August yes. as well. Yeah, he said, yes, yeah, Dangote said for PMS, yeah. it was July, yeah. but because well, it's of the been moved fire, to August as well. August. So, so we have August visitors. <laughs> August visitors, we should be expecting. So he said, he had to say, I'm not lying. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Mele Kerry. Yeah. So we're watching you, Mele, and uh, all your team. Absolutely. We need to see those PMS roll out from that refinery. Well, you saw earlier on that the uh, reinstated deputy governor of Edo State, Philip Shaibo, has now defected to the APC. Uh, but what was sad about the turn of events is the death of the policeman, the violence uh, that erupted in Benin City. So he's since defected now. A lot of people saw this coming. But what do you have to say? Well, this user is congratulating uh, Philip Shaibo on his defection to the All Progressives Congress. I'm guessing that uh, favorite Bolivia is an APC member because this user <laughs> says you are welcome. <laughs> so, uh, and it's okay. <laughs> Whatever party you belong to is fine. Uh, Black Shock Soji says, so both government and deputy are in different parties. Isn't this great? Philip has shown himself. Mm. Well, this user, Sonda Jacob, is asking uh, Mr. Shaibu to return, or rather, let me take this again. He says, return to APC and still wants to be deputy governor using Abuja courts. Uh, this is laughable uh, as it is now. Governor is PDP, Deputy, APC, <laughs> funny. So it's funny, actually, when you put the context, Abuja court. Uh, but yeah, maybe you're talking about the location being in Abuja, and that's it. But there you have it. From that user. So there, there's, there's a lot going on as far as that Edo State issue is concerned. He won the case. I was reading part of the judgment yesterday. This is the original CTC. And now the state government has appealed the case, mm. even filed for stay of execution. The argument as to whether stay of execution uh, should make him hold off on his action. There's a lot of legalese but and arguments. The stay of execution has been granted? They, uh, they, well, there is an argument. I, I spoke to a senior advocate of Nigeria. A, there, it's, it looks like they are divided on this. On one hand, it mustn't be for, for the fact that it's filed in court, it can hold. Mm. Uh, or they are saying it must be granted. So that's the lawyer's argument. It's, it's not my argument. <sighs> so for the fact, some say, if it's filed and all of that. Yeah. So where do we go? Where do we go next? Let's go to the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. That statement made by the President of the Senate, Godzilla Pabi, while he was uh, speaking in the chamber. We'd like to listen to it, and it will give you reactions of Nigerians. I don't want the bill killed, but it should be slight modification, sir. It's a necessary is, uh, bill. The two senators, Natasha, in the chamber, you have, to be, you have to be recognized before you speak. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, we are not in a, we are, we are not in a nightclub. Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time, say aye. There you go. So that elicited lots of reactions, particularly when the Senate president said, this is not, not in a, a nightclub. And, um, uh, or we're not in a nightclub. But yeah, essentially that's what he said. And that was referring, uh, speaking to Senator Natasha Akwati. So there are different things here. There, there are the rules of a Senate uh, that speaks to how you can speak uh, in the chamber, what the procedure is, right? But then there's also the way the Senate president said it. And that, of course, angered a lot of people. So, yeah, the, the women are angry. They yeah. said that statement by Senator Godswell Akbabi was sexist. That's why it is. I've seen, seen women grow literally saying he has to apologize. Yeah. But... If it was a man, a man who said that, uh, he said he, he would not make that statement. Yeah. Uh, why did he say it to a woman and all of that? Uh, well, let's find out what the people are saying. Yeah. Ben Samuel, Flourish007, that's your handle. Even after she acknowledged her mistake and apologized, he wouldn't say such a thing to a male colleague. <laughs> okay, this is a sexist comment and he should apologize. I always concerned about, I'm always concerned whenever he speaks. Well, Noah is next, says the Senate president, that's what SP means. The Senate President should apologize to the distinguished Senator Natasha. Electric voting should be the new order of voting in chambers like this. Uh, well, I think that's also another angle mm, to this no. one. Electronic voting should be a way to go. All right. Uh, Ayo 133 says the Speaker, is this Speaker? That should be the Senate President. Was unprofessional to say such humiliating words. I guess that's what he wanted to say to her. She acknowledged her mistake, then apologized when obvious he just wanted to show, uh, she calls it toxic masculinity. So it's a shame. So uh, well, there looks to be, or well, seems to be some consistency uh, with the reaction. So uh, let's move finally to what's playing out in the United States. Mm. Uh, I mean, President Joe Biden's tweet alone got 
dozens of millions of views yesterday. Almost broke the internet, Jeffrey, the moment he announced that he was stepping down from the race, standing down, essentially. It's reminiscent of what uh, former President mm -hmm. Donald Trump said <laughs> during that incident. So Joe Biden has stepped down now and is since, uh, well, endorsed uh, the vice Step president. Stepped down from Kamala the race. Harris. Step down from the race. Let's be clear. Like I said earlier, <laughs> step down from the race, just to be clear. Uh, so we see this one from Barnacle says, we're sad to see Joe step down, but we're happy you nominated your vice president just like Obama nominated and stood behind you to defeat Donald Trump in 2020. Kamala Harris has huge shoes to fill, but she's more than capable of defeating Donald Trump and saving democracy. So obviously this user uh, is from the United States. All right, Kerr, oh, this is, this is a Nigerian, Carol Burris. I had to check again because that's the sound like this. Uh, you are a good and blessed man. I can't imagine how hard this has been for you. Once again, you have shown our nation what a true leader really is. You brought us back, of course, uh, from chaos of Trump and in your quiet way, made incredible progress. God bless you and thank you for all you have given to America. I wanted to be sure because this sounded like an American name. So oh, that's of course. I say, yes. If you're a Nigerian tweeting about this, it's yeah. okay, by the way. Uh, but of course, <laughs> people will say, we have... Bigger fish to fry here in Nigeria. <laughs> but you understand, whatever plays out in the United States will naturally affect yeah, it global all of us. politics. You can see world leaders reacting, actually. Yes. This is not even the election. In fact, the uh, Democratic has any, Party... Has any African leader reacted? I would like to see the African leaders. Jeffrey, yeah. don't put me in that position. Yeah, no, no. It's the, clear, no. The Democratic Because we Party, said the African leaders have left that one side. Of group. course. They, the African leaders don't resign. Even if they are dying, they don't resign. Come on, Jeff. Yeah. Even the Democratic Party, <laughs> they've not held their convention officially. So we'll see how this plays out. Will other candidates now step up and uh, try to contest against Kamala Harris or would everybody stand down and just allow her pass through? Don't forget, Joe Biden is 81 years. So some people thought this was a no brainer. But those are the major trends that we have for you right now, Jeff. Yes. At least for now. So, uh, but keep those comments coming in. Hashtag CTV Morning Brief or on our WhatsApp. All right. So uh, we're going to have loads of conversation. And it's because you are interested in that conversation. We'll take this quick break. When we come back, we'll get up with the very first one. Join us again.